Welcome back, Shalligators. Well, we've got some breaking news out of Hollywood just in time for the holidays. Ariana Grande is engaged. Can you see the smile on my face? Does it imply that I'm happy about this? I'm not. Are any of us? Ari, what are you doing, baby girl? Come on, work with us here. Did you learn nothing from your failed too quick engagement to Pete Davidson? Did you learn nothing from Demi Lovato's failed too quick engagement to her homeless ex? I don't even remember his name. Exactly. Did you learn nothing from this channel? I know some people that you know watch this channel. You got to know. We're going to break down what's actually going on. I've got some insider tea on Ariana and something that might explain why she keeps getting into these too quick, very messy, probably disastrous situations. And more than anything, we're going to talk about what we can learn from this. And I had you guys weigh in on my Instagram at ChallenXO, like suggesting some topics. And I got how to not be blinded by love, how to stop rushing into things and take it slow and learn what the proper pace actually is, right? How to be alone, how to learn from your mistakes in past relationships and stop repeating these toxic patterns. And we've talked about these things kind of like we've touched on them here and there, but we're gonna talk about all of them in one video today. And Ari, listen to me because you know what? The Chalantourage, is usually right. But before we get into it, just want to remind you guys, head on over to my website, shallonlester.com, where you can shop merch. You can submit a question to me that gets answered. You can donate to a needy family for the holidays. We're trying to supply some kids and seniors with stuff they really need. You can also binge some videos. And if you head over to Vault NYC, you can shop my new necklace that says warm blooded, comes in gold and silver. And if you order by tonight, you get Christmas delivery. So hurry, hurry, hurry. There's no there's only a few left, so get on it, girls. If you like my revenge necklace, you're gonna love this one. I love it. I'm waiting for my own to arrive. I cannot wait. Okay, Ariana. I want her to be happy. I want. She seems like a nice girl. She's so talented, but one shitty relationship is an outlier. It happens to us all. Two. You're the common denominator there, especially when they happen so fast in succession. And also, I think it should be noted that Pete and her new fiance, Dalton Gomez, look like twins. Someone said there's memes going around that says Dalton looks like Pete Davidson with a sleep schedule. <laughs> so true. You know how like babies born too early, they have to go in the NICU and like in these basically like warming trays. That's what I want to do to Pete. I just want to like cook him a little bit longer. He looks he looks sickly and tubercular, like pale and tubercular, like a like a Victorian ghost, like a like a jilted groom who threw himself himself off the Tower of London, and now he haunts Mister Haversham's haberdashery. Just yeah, Dalton looks a little bit healthier. Looks like he's been cooked a little bit longer. He also sort of looks like Ariana in this photo that she posted. I gotta talk about this. I gotta talk about this photo. You know, I'm a big person. I'm a big believer in body language because science is a big believer in body language, and I believe in science. Weird. This is. This doesn't look happy. It's like these. My friend used to call that kind of smile snatch face, and every time I see it, I'm like snatch face. It's just not. That's not a happy smile. Like when I got engaged, I was like ugly crying, like oh, like I, your happiest smile is not your prettiest smile. We know that. Like. Your prettiest is like, and you don't look like that organically, but you also don't look like this. And both of them, no teeth showing. The smile doesn't really touch their eyes. They look more friend-like. This reads to me as friends. It actually, based on their similar physical features, it reads as siblings. They look like fraternal twins. It's, it's strange. But Dalton, I do think, is a step up from Pete. Why? Let's talk about Dalton. Who the hell is this guy, right? I didn't even realize she was dating someone. Like, I I guess I knew it, but not like, she hasn't been super vocal about it. She hasn't been posting about him. And on one hand, like, that's great. Don't do that. Because you know, you probably have been there where you posted someone too soon, then things fall apart and you're like, ugh. It's amplified so much more for a celebrity, right? <clears throat> and that's why celebs will wait six months after they actually break up with someone to be like, oh yeah, we broke up. Like, just so it doesn't look like things collapse quite as quickly as they did. But one of you guys said on Instagram, like her, these super serious engagements and announcements, they kind of seem to come out of nowhere. And that, that is true. And I'm going to, like I said, go into the tea about her and, you know, explain maybe why she's rushing into things. But who is this guy? Well, he is a real estate broker. 
It might be a real estate agent. I can't remember. And they are different. I didn't know they were different. Um, but the broker is like the pimp of and like a good, well, it's in a pimpy way. And he gets a commission from what the underling real estate agents get. Like a, like a pimp. They have to split their commission with the broker. Anyway, he's not just some dude selling double wide down by the river, right? He is making huge deals. He sells homes to celebrities, high profile people. So he's making bank on his own. He has his own thing going on. He's also sort of celebrity adjacent. He's used to the rich. He knows how to comport himself in these social situations. It's not like, whoa, she's so rich. Like he's at a high level too. Obviously not where she is, but he's not hopefully intimidated by a very successful person because he spends his days around successful people. But you know, oh, remains to be seen. Men always say that. Of course I'm not intimidated by a successful woman. Who the fuck says that they are, right? And yet many, many guys actually are. But I think that this is a step up. Hopefully he's a bit more emotionally healthy than Pete Davidson. Hopefully he's been more physically healthy. Like I said, he looks like he's just been cooked a little longer. Great job. A little, got some more vitamin D. Pete looks like he's going to get rickets. Like just sit out in the sun for a half hour a day. That's it. You can, you can wear sunblock. Just half hour. Get, you're going to get scurvy. You look like you have scurvy. Anyway. But where did this relationship come from? How did it start? I, they started dating in March. It is December. Yes, of the same year. Same year. And they quarantined together and they fell in love. Who does that sound like? Who does that sound like? <gasps> Demi Lovato. Demi Lovato had literally the exact same relationship trajectory. Started dating Max, that homeless dude. He's homeless now. So we're going to call him that. Her homeless ex in March. And then they got engaged. <sighs> I mean, on one hand, yes, you going through quarantine with someone is truly like, it's like your own personal Vietnam. Like you, this year, that's how we felt. It's like, it was so tough. It was so hard. You're in this small environment, not that small in her house, I'm sure, but still walls are walls. And you learn a lot about someone. You learn if you can tolerate them. You learn if their jokes get old. You learn if they pee with the door open or whatever, but you still can only know so much. There is simply nothing that can replace the data collection that comes with time. And yes, quarantine was a hardship. And yes, it dealt with many issues, both existential and logistical and emotional and familial. But there's more issues out there, right? Are you, I mean, who doesn't want to be quarantined with someone they're crazy falling in love with? Like, that's really fun. Relationships are logistics. Love is logistics. We say this all the time. It's the day-to-day -day drudgery. Hey, how is he going to react when actually Ariana's not home all the time? When she's on tour, when she's off doing this, when she's at the Oscars and he doesn't get invited, right? Or vice versa. How is she going to feel when he's back out there selling houses to like this slinky new sexy model or the new it girl on the block? And she's like, where the fuck have you been? He's like, I've been trying to make deals. So here is the tea on Ariana. She cannot be alone to the point that she's actually a serial cheater. Wait, what? What? Yes, this is the tea for my friends over at Exposing SMG. Follow them on Instagram. They're two lovely girls who have a ton of dirt and gossip, and I've been following them for a long time. We are not the same person. We're not, I, I am not the person behind their account. Some people have this conspiracy theory that I am. I wish I had that kind of time, and why, why wouldn't I just say it? Anyway, they're great. So they have done a lot of deep dives on Ariana. And this is like the consensus from many sources is that she needs constant stimulation. And we, we don't like to see the girl as the villain. And look, she's not a villain, certainly. But you know what I mean? Like we want to see like the guys being the stupid one. And she's they're just like, we're the little angels and blah, blah, blah. We know that's not true. We also know at this point in the Chalantourage that celebrities go into celebrity because there's some issues. They need a lot of attention. They need a lot of fame. And you know, when celebrities are like, I want my privacy, bitch, no, you, you would work at H&R motherfucking block if you wanted your privacy. You don't, and that's fine. But don't act like this, this world doesn't feed you, doesn't feed you, it does. So there's a certain pathology of celebrities. <clears throat> They're neurotic, they're incredibly narcissistic, and they have an extremely high need for chaos and drama and stimulation. And of course, that means they're going to get in relationships too fast with other toxic, dramatic people. 
So I think it's interesting that she chose someone who isn't a celebrity. And I kind of, you know, if this is her pathology where she needs a lot of attention, I don't see it lasting because it, I bet she'd cheat on him. He might be too stable for her. Now, who knows? We don't know very much about this guy. He could be an absolute nightmare. He could be a fantastic guy. She could be fantastic with no issues whatsoever. But the fact that she has rushed into not one, but two engagements, seemingly learning absolutely nothing from that first disaster, that does bolster the theory that she needs a ton of stimulation. Therefore, I think it's completely plausible that she would be someone who cheated. When I was cheating on people, I used to be a cheater. It was exactly that reason. It was exactly that reason. People cheat for two reasons, to feel alive and to explore different sides of their personality. And feeling alive can look completely different to one person. Some people feel alive by jumping off a building, right? You know, with a bungee cord and whatever. I don't like to do that. I don't. But my point is feeling alive can manifest as something very toxic or can manifest as something very healthy. We see someone getting into a relationship too soon, into a marriage, into an engagement too soon. I don't call that healthy, especially when you have data that shows it doesn't really work out well. So I understand that she thinks she knows this dude after spending quarantine, and I'm sure he thinks he knows her, but there are aspects of their lives that have not been revealed yet because logistics have not allowed them or because they are purposely concealing them. I say all the time, it takes a really long time to actually see someone. Oh, there it is. And we don't always see someone, like the mask doesn't just completely fall, it cracks. And we'll see the flash and we're like, wow, you really bitched out that waitress. Huh, I had no idea you felt like that about Asians weird things, you know? You're like, this is odd. How do people react when they don't get their way? How do they act when logistics aren't in their favor? How do they act when their ego is threatened? Ariana and Dalton might not know this about each other. So let's talk what we can learn about this. But first, can we talk about her ring? Lots of different feelings about the ring. <laughs> One of you guys said the crooked placement of the diamond, like the way the diamond is slanted reminds me of a cockroach. And I was like, now I can't unsee that. I think it's an unusual ring. And I guess the pearl was from her grandfather's tie clip. And her grandmother had a dream that her grandfather said it would always protect Ariana. I think that's sweet. So that's really cute. Again, like, ah, uh, what I've noticed with Ariana is like, she blends family with the people she's dating very early. Like, do you, didn't she get a tattoo of Pete Davidson's dad's firefighter badge number because he died September 11th I think she did that's that's sweet but that's very strange to me that's very intense and strange and I think it's interesting that after only knowing this dude knowing knowing him for what nine months not even not even 11 eight months that he's already gained access to like her family jewelry. Do you know what I mean? I think that's, hmm, I think that's interesting, but okay. So what, what can we learn about this? What can we learn about this? Because while you might not be Ariana Grande and going through these exact same scenarios, you've probably rushed into something or maybe you've watched people rush into something because this is the thing. When we watch this happen, it's it's so obvious how unhealthy it is. It's just, it's just so obvious. Like very little about this looks like romantic and fantastic. Maybe it does. Like when I was younger, it probably did to me. But now that I'm older, now that I have been married and now, or even before I got married, being in a very long-term relationship for years, like you know what goes into it and you know what doesn't. And you know that lust and that like, ha, ah, that just gaga eyed thing, that burns off. And what are you left with? Do you have a friendship? Do you have mutual goals? That's huge. You Love is not looking at each other. Love is looking out in the same direction, right? Are you doing that? There's a lot that goes into a relationship that isn't love. Love is actually, I would say 15 to 20%, seriously. You know, like chemistry is great, but once that fades, as it is wont to do in the face of just life and time, 
are you on the same path together? Is this your team mate? If you were starting a business with someone, right? You both had the idea. Oh my God, crepe escape. It's gonna be a fucking crepe stand by the beach. I've always wanted to do a crepe stand by the beach called crepe escape. Please don't steal it from me. And yeah, I love crepes. I love crepes. Oh my God, this is gonna be great. But what do you actually bring to the table? Are you both the idea guy? Are you both the money guy? Are you both a logistics guy and no one's creative and no one can do the graphic design? What is this business partnership comprised of? And we don't want to look at love like that, do we? Oh, and it's just, bleh, it's, so, it's just romantic. We're caught up in it. That's why we have a 60% divorce rate. Do you, do you see that? That's why we have that. That's why we have that. Because we don't want, oh, it's so unromantic. Ew, a prenup. Oh my God, no. Oh, I don't want to have these hard conversations. Okay, see you in divorce court. Or just see you in a miserable ass relationship for longer than you need to be one because you don't want to look at reality. I don't know why love and reality have become mortal enemies, right? I like knowing the reality of, of someone and I like having not hard conversations, but probing ones. How do you feel about kids? Do you want kids? Would you ever live in Europe? What if there was a war and you got drafted? Would you go? I'm Because I like those conversations because... I am not afraid of the answer. An answer that I want to hear, great. That aligns with mine, fantastic. An answer that I don't want to hear, hmm. I don't want to log this data point. I don't enjoy it. But I feel satisfied. I feel satisfied knowing this. We talk about this example all the time, that like late at night, if you're bored and you're like looking in the mirror and like looking at your pores, ostensibly, you don't want to find anything in there, right? You want to have this poreless, beautiful Haley Baldwin skin that has not one clog or blackhead. But when you find something, you're like, oh, and you're like so excited to get it out. That's how I feel when I log negative data points. I'm smoking something out. I'm like, oh, all right. I'm saving myself time. I'm saving myself heartache. And more than anything, I'm fine with this because I am fine with being single. I'm actually kind of more fine being so I, I need to get laid, though. That's, that's, the, pro that's the problem. Uh, sorry, mom, if you're watching this or anyone's mom, sorry. But, uh, you know, I'm a red blood American girl. You know, my appetite matches my hair. <laughs> Redheads are crazy. So me being okay being by myself means that I don't rush into things. But we are all fools in love. And what do fools do? Fools rush in. So you guys had some questions about how to stop rushing in. Because like I said, when we as an outsider look at a relationship that's moving really fast, we're like, mm, mm, mm. But when you're on the inside of it, you're like, wow, this is so, I feel so alive. I feel so alive. Correlatively, people who have relationships like that, that are just so crazy and so heady and so adrenaline rushy and feel so alive, what do they end up doing later on? <gasps> Cheating. Because why? We cheat to feel alive. This is not a difficult concept to link, right? And so when we look at dudes who come in and they love bomb us and they overwhelm us, we're like, we look at our friends, we're like, that is a fuck boy, girl. G Gina, that's a, that's a fuck boy. She's like, no, it's just crazy, we're crazy in love. He needs that level of stimulation. He needs that fire and that spark. And when it starts to dim even a little with you, when the drudgery of day-to-day -day life sets in, when someone's not checking the mail, when someone needs to pick up the dog poop, and that settles down, he is going out to replicate the alive feeling, AKA he's cheating. And then he will monkey vine from one girl to the next. And what is Ariana doing? Not, not healthy, not healthy. So how do we stop doing this? Well, I was this person. I was absolutely this person. And I have been this person since I was like five. Like I am boy crazy forever. Boys create this sort of noise that just fascinates me. And I, they, I find them sort of mesmerizing and also endlessly disappointing and unimpressive. And yet, going back, <clears throat> or he's, at least I used to be like that. Like I always am going to love love. I'm always going to have crushes and stuff. But it's not the same pathology. It's not if I don't have a boyfriend what does my life even mean? And I used to feel that way, for sure. Part of that is pressure from society because, uh, hello, 
That wasn't a rhetoric I invented myself. That wasn't a tape loop I wrote from scratch. That was the tape loop society foists on all of us. Oh, that's great about your second book, but uh, no husband? Guess it just didn't happen for you. I had people say that shit to me, right? And you're like, oh, fuck. You hear it from family. You hear it from friends. You hear it from the media. And I broke that spell sort of, I, I've talked about this before, when I got divorced. My divorce broke my whole life open. It broke me open. It broke every aspect of my life open. And from those ashes came beauty. From that smoldering wreckage rose a phoenix. Because all the things I was afraid of, all the aloneness and the loss of this and what is my life meaning, it all happened. It all happened. And I faced it head on. I could, there was nothing else to do. There was nothing else to do except for live it and feel it. And then I realized, ah, wait, I'm still alive. I'm still here. I still have my friends, I still have my career. There's still good times. I feel freer. I feel more authentic. I feel more whole. So yeah, it was painful. No, I don't want to do it again. But actually, I've learned a lot about myself. I face these monsters under the bed. But is that actually how it went? Is that, is that really how it went, Shallon? Mm, or did something happen in between? Oh, yes. I got out of a marriage and got right into a Pete Davidson, Dalton Gomez-esque relationship. I was our Ariana. I monkey vined from this incredible place of pain into an incredibly... <sighs> It wasn't a toxic relationship, but it was just the highs were so high and the lows were so low. When he would text me, we would see each other. I felt like I was on drugs. I felt like I was on heroin. I never need to do serious drugs. I know what it feels like because I had him. And I held on so hard to that relationship because I was trying to run away from the pain of my divorce. And I felt like I was gaming the system, right? Oh my God, if I can make this relationship work, and what does that even mean? Like get married again? I didn't want to get married again. I, but I was a dog chasing a car. I was in an out of control getaway vehicle. But I thought if I can do this, if I can make this work, I've like, I've gotten away with something. I don't have to actually face the pain of my divorce. I can just shove it in this little box, goodbye, and run away. Hurt locker. I wasn't shoving it into a box. I was shoving it into a person. I was shoving it into a D1 athlete, right? And when that went belly up, suddenly I was grieving him and I was grieving my husband. And it all came crashing down. And I had nowhere to go but through. I couldn't go around this pain anymore. I had to just deal with it because I just had gotten so, so exhausted. At some point, running away from your problems becomes so much more tiring than just facing them. And once I was like, oh, once I just capitulated to the pain and the grief, it processed so fast. It really did. Once I really was like, okay, I'm getting to therapy. I'm reading books. More than that, because... All those things can only, they can only lead you to water. They can't make you drink. Once I took a good hard look, why I was in my previous relationships, what I did, what I, Shallon, personally did to ruin them, to break down communication, to foist my own fantasies onto realities that did not exist and hurt locker them, I started to learn. This was not fun. Growth is not fun. That's why it's called growing pains. Not fun at all. But I logged those data points and I'm like, ah, it's like looking at your bank statement. Like if you're broke and you're like, where's my money going? And you really like, really look at it. And you're like, I guess it's eight lattes a week that add up to $60 that add up to however much a year. Like once you face your own hand in your outcomes, because baby girl, it's always your own hands. It's always your own hands. Like we said, once, one bad relationship, outlier, it happens. Two, three, five, 11, that's you. Maybe these guys are a circus. You keep buying tickets and sitting front row, why? I had to ask myself that. Why do I keep getting in relationships with people with this pathology, this behavior, this family situation? What about this works for me? works for me. It doesn't seem, 
doesn't work for me at all. Based on results, yeah, it does. It absolutely works. Because yeah, again, these guys are a mess. I keep showing up. I keep answering the phone. I keep going out. I keep doing whatever. So why am I doing that? And that's what Ariana has to ask herself too. Why does she keep getting into relationships with guys who want to get married after eight months? Because let's not forget, there should be someone else pumping the brakes too. If I had pulled that with my ex-husband, he'd be like, we're not getting married. We've been dating for six months. But no. Right? A sane, healthy person, which my ex-husband was and always will be, would not abide that. That would be too fast for them. The fact that she keeps choosing people who are on the same roller coaster trajectory, that's not good. Yeah, maybe these guys are messy. She is too. And we cannot. I mean, we can, and a lot of us do, but we do ourselves such an injustice. If we look at our life from the position of victimhood, I just keep dating fuckboys. I don't know why guys keep cheating on me. Every guy I date is so possessive. They all have such crazy families. Who is the common denominator, girl? I've had to ask myself that too. My mom had a hard conversation with me today about pathologies that I have had and patterns that I've had. And, you know, I was trying, I was like, well, no, because so-and-so wasn't like this. So-and-so wasn't like that. And she's like, but all of your long-term relationships have been typified by X, Y, and Z. And like... Okay, cowboy's whining at the door because, because I'm filming. He has to come in here and either be gassy, destroy something, knock the camera over. That's, why not? So if you want to stop rushing into relationships, ask yourself, what are you rushing away from? Or what are you rushing to? Think about if we're driving somewhere. You know I love a good car metaphor. If we're driving somewhere and we're rushing, I'm not just out like gunning it around the back roads if I'm not escaping something or trying to get somewhere. So what is this somewhere? What destination is this man? Is he distraction? Is he purpose in your life? Is he an escape from your family or a lack of friends or bad friends or whatever it might be? But if you're rushing, you're trying to run away from something. With me, when I was rushing in my new relationship, I was trying to rush away from the pain of my divorce. And I was trying to rush into a brand new level that told me I didn't actually have to deal with all that pain. No, you don't, you don't have to deal with that. <laughs> I think a really good way to know if you're in that rush zone, right? Because we don't always know it. Like I, I keep saying, we as outsiders observe it and we're like, mm. but when you're in it, it feels wonderful and heady and you feel alive. But we have to stop and be like, is this going too fast? Well, a way to know if things are going too fast, there's a few. There's the emotional way and there's a logistical way. So an emotional way is, do you feel anxious, right? Think about if we're in a car, again with the cars, out of, you think I was like an automotive expert. I barely know how to drive. If we're in a car and we're like in the passenger seat and you know, when someone's driving, you're just, they're going too fast and you're just like, ah, uh, uh, Steph, slow down, slow down, it's a bear. I think it's a bear on the side of the road. You're just, you're just like on edge and tense. I felt like that in relationships. Like, ah, no, I like him, but he just wants to be over here every night. Ha, ah, I actually don't want to drink seven days in a row and we don't need to do Molly. It's just, it's whatever it might be. Like, I, I, I like him, but I don't want to have sex yet. Like, it'd be nice if we could wait just a little bit. Your psyche is trying to tell you something. Your body is trying to tell you something. Is your stomach nervous? Are you tense? Is your back hurt? Do you get headaches? Is your jaw tight? Your body is on edge. You're inflamed. Why? Why do we get inflamed and on edge in our body? Think about an animal. When an animal is frightened or threatened, what does it do? It puffs up. Ah! You know, it's up on its hind legs. It's the hair on the back of its neck is standing up, right? This is not different for us humans. When we are having that inflammation response in our body, our skin's breaking out, our stomach is upset, your body is trying to tell you something. It's heard from brain, and brain's like, she's not fucking listening. Can you, can you do something? Can you just give her like the runs for four days? And, and body's like, I'm on it. Here comes the cystic acne. Listen, girl. And then there's the logistical ways to tell if you're moving too fast. When was the last time you did your laundry? Is your work slacking? Are you late? Have you talked to your mom lately? Are you blowing off things with your friends? Are your grades dropping? Have you not worked out in three weeks or since you guys met? Are you exhausted because you're up all night and yeah, you're having fun and you're hooking up and it's like, those nights are great and there should be some of them, but if that is the bulk of your relationship to the point where there is a lack of balance, 
these are red flags. And when we feel these things, when our body tells us, when our mind and our heart, when our friends and our family tell us, we do not want to listen. We don't want to listen. Why? Why don't we want to listen? Because we're in a rush. Where? Where is this man allegedly going to take us? Why do we have our foot on the gas, rushing down the aisle, rushing to K-Jeweler to get some ratty-ass engagement ring when you should give him three more years to save, girl, buy something nice? Why are we doing this? What is the monster under the bed? What is chasing you? Ask yourself that question. And don't be afraid of the answer. Because the answer might be embarrassing, right? It might be cringy, or it might seem completely valid. No, 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 no. I want to marry this dude. I want to lock him down, get the fuck out of this town, because he's going to be going to Harvard for grad school. I want to get out of here. This is real. I want to get away from my family, away from this dead-end job. Okay. How could you do that without him? Men are great. Love them. Sometimes I sleep with them two at a time. I'm just kidding. I don't. I don't. I don't. I've kissed several in a day, though. That was fun. But they're not, they're not the saviors we think that they are, girl. They're, they're not. They're not. Marriage can be a great thing, and marriage can level you up and give you, yes, it can give you purpose. It can give you a partner. But it has to be with the right person. And not all men are created equal. And if you're in a rush... You kind of think that. It's like, I need a man. I need a seat filler. I am casting for the role. I don't care who the fuck you are. Please just get me out of here. Get yourself out of there. And when I did that for myself, when I stopped looking for boys to constantly distract me and what I wanted to be distracted from, I'll tell you. So part of it was like the pain of my divorce. Part of it was the stagnancy of my career. On paper, I was killing it. I was absolutely crushing it. I was moving up the ladder faster than anyone at Star Magazine had. I was a girl about town. I was a bold-faced name. People would write about me. People recognized me. I was starting this channel. It was burgeoning. I was miserable. I was miserable. I wasn't, well, no. I wasn't miserable, but I wasn't fulfilled. And for me, if you ain't first, you're last, baby. That's how I feel about my career and my achievement. If I'm not career first, doing what I was put on this earth to do at that point in time, I might as well be a grave digger. It doesn't matter. I need to be self-actualized. And I wasn't. And I knew it. And some of my good friends knew it. But I didn't want to acknowledge it. So instead, I would fill my life with the noise that seemed to fascinate me, boys. Because it seemed easier to solve. It seemed a pleasant distraction. And it was a distraction that society... Yes, keep going. Society wasn't encouraging me, a single woman in her early 30s, to focus just on her career and not date. Nope. It was focusing me to the opposite. Don't you want to get married? What about kids? You like TikTok? Like you feeling like that? Wait, you haven't frozen your eggs? Oh, Shallon, you're running out of time. Shut the fuck up. If I want a baby, I will acquire a baby. I'll acquire a baby. They're all over the place. You can adopt them. There's so many kids that needs home that need homes. I'd love to be a foster mom. But I actually have a finite amount of time to go after my dreams. And society tells us the other way around. You can write that book after you retire, after your kids leave for college. Psst. No. no. Why? So I can be miserable for 18 years until they go? No. Mama come first. I serve myself first. I am put on this earth to serve me, not to birth something out, not to be some man's wife, not to do anything, but follow the dreams God has put in my heart and my mind with the talent she has imbued with me, right? So what are you rushing away from? That's what I was doing. And once I got into this career, once I became a YouTuber, my outlook on boys completely changed. I didn't need to get a weight car. I didn't want one. I adore my boyfriend now and I like being in a relationship but he was out of town for a while and I was happy as a clam because I just got to focus on work and I was with the dog and I was like this is great I feel great I'm excited for him to come back but I am f-i-n-e fine on my own and so now I don't worry about getting into these rushed relationships but if I'm being honest I missed it 
I miss it. And I was saying the other day, I was like, you know, I would just, I loved that feeling of just being swept away. Right. And now I don't have to make any decisions because this relationship is just going so fast and oh, I'm just caught up in love. And my friend who I was talking to, she's like, everyone misses drugs. And that's all it is, right? Isn't that it? Doesn't that just sum it up? Everyone loves drugs. Everyone loves the high. Everyone loves the rush. It's the downside you got to watch out for. How can we give that to ourselves, Or how can we make our life kind of like drug proof? Where I don't, I don't need drugs anymore to take me out of my life and my reality. Whether that's a drug as a man or a drug as in an eight ball of cocaine, like actual drugs. Do you know that I thought an eight ball of cocaine was literally the size of an eight ball? Why would I not think it? I guess it means it's like an eighth of a gram. I don't know. I don't know the metric system. I'm the product of an American school system. I'm sorry. So when people are like, I did an eight ball last night. I was like, you did what? Do you need to go to the hospital? Anyway, I don't need any of that. I'm so much more fulfilled now. It doesn't mean the allure of rushy love is gone. But if I know, I know now that if I found myself in a relationship like that, the highs would not be as high, which sucks, but the lows wouldn't be as low either. I wouldn't be giving up my friends, my job, my laundry, my workouts. I don't work out. For a guy, I would be so much more tempered. And that is because I've learned. That's because I've faced the demons head on. That's because I've crafted a life I don't actually want to run away from. And it's also because I know myself and I trust myself more. And that feels really good. To trust yourself, to trust like, hey, I'm good. I trust my decision making not only today, but I have faith in my decision making tomorrow. It's like if you stop eating bad foods, you know, if you were like just terrible about what you ate and you completely switched up your habits and you're maybe you're on a plant based diet or something. And to know like, hey, whatever someone throws at me at a party, whatever is on that dessert buffet table, I got this. It's no big deal. I don't have to be afraid of anything. Isn't that freedom? And isn't freedom luxury? And isn't luxury a feeling of wholeness and peace, right? And none of that revolves around a man. It all revolves around you. And that's the gift and the curse, because that means you got to do the work. A man isn't going to save you from this. But once you do do that work, your whole life begins. Not when you get married. So if you're thinking about getting engaged, take it off the table. Ask yourself, what if, what if engagement just didn't exist? And what if this was the way it was forever? I go to his house, maybe we live together, whatever. What if I didn't have these these arbitrary boxes to check off that were saving me from the, the pressure my parents put on me, whatever. Would you be okay with this relationship? I did a video on how to know if it's time to get engaged. You guys can check that out in the meantime. But I want to know your thoughts on Ariana. Is this going to go up in flames? Down in flames? Up and down in flames. It's going to go every which, which way in flames. Do you think that actually this dude is a really good fit for her? Have you heard some gossip about him that maybe we don't know? Please share it below. And tell me your experience with rushing in. Did it work out? Are you still kind of like, ooh, I'm waiting to find out? When and what in your life told you this is moving too fast? Was it a physical feeling? Was it your friends kind of intervening? Was it something logistical that veered out of control that you're like, wait a minute, I haven't done my laundry in six months? Something's got to give. I want to know. Check back tomorrow, Shalligators, for some more Vlogmas. I'll see you later.